section, you need to create these for for every angle that you want him to be able to see in. Um, what you can do is you can set um, an exception for um, what 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 you could do is you could say select one at random, like we have done, and then say position test position. Um, no, it's actually uh, movement, I believe. Uh, comp it's direction direction compare direction so what you could do is you could set say these directions here so if it was facing to the right and then you could say you know it picks one of these enemies at random every two seconds and if it finds it's in this direction to the right um, then it will fire one in the right hand direction you can do that or you could just set it so that they just have a, a big spread around them that's what we're doing here so we need to shoot another one and uh, we'll shoot up straight up for this one and at 60 again and you can add as many of these as you want but really you want you want it to be shooting a nice spread really um, to to find this you know your player character and uh, so we're just going to do one more. We're just going to make it shoot one in uh, the bottom one. We're not going to do the full width, but uh, basically this is what we did in, in um, Spy 2. And this is how we, we made it so you could actually see. We even had it so that um, the object, um, as it was surviving, got bigger. So it, the um, range was like a cone. And you can do that as well. But this is just a basic one. Um, it, it's better off to use quite big objects starting off small getting bigger because uh, obviously as you get further away it, your vision becomes more blurred um, so here we go we've got the, uh, the the shooting of these objects we want to make it so that when this collides with a backdrop that it's destroyed like so and um, then for the sake of um, showing um, how things are going so we want to counter counter object there we go all right and this is going to be a number multimedia fusion just automatically makes it a number so this is going to be our counter for um, if the um, player has been spotted so what we're going to do is we're going to set an event for um, sight colliding with the player if it collides with the player we destroy sight and we set the counter to a one so we'll visually be able to see the result and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, if it isn't equal to zero <clears throat> and then we'll put insert every five seconds we'll return it back to zero like so so then we can we can gauge this now I'm going to increase the every amount so it's going to be not every second it's going to be every 20th of a second like so so now the um, enemy is going to go up and down and every 20th of the second it's going to pick one of them at random which is this only one that's there and it's going to fire the sight objects and then when it when it collides with the backdrop the sight object will disappear um, but when it collides with the player, then it will set the counter to one. So we're just going to set that going now. And as you can see, there we go. It's just sighted the player. And it's gone to one. And this is how you can you can set yourself up with a uh, a proper AI system, and you can base the reaction on um, it actually touching the player. Now. It's all well and good using this counter to signify if um, the bouncy object, uh, the enemy, has spotted. But it's of no use because obviously if you're using a generic counter for the whole level, if one enemy spies it, then every enemy seems to know where it, where it is. So what you can do is you can set it so instead of, um, instead of it just automatically... Um, all right, instead of it automatically just making every enemy know... Of its existence you can set at the, at the start of the level or when you've created it you can have a counter which you're adding to which gives this enemy an alterable value so at the start of the level because we've only got one I'm going to set its alterable value so alterable value a I'm going to set it to one and then what you can do is when you have this shooting 
you can, because this is the event where it shoots the thing, you can set the alterable value of the shooting object. So set alterable value A, and then you can retrieve data from the exact one that shot, that shot the item to the same value as alterable value A. Check current expression, valid, there we go. So now, when these um, bullets are being shot um, for sight, they are using the same value as the enemy. Now what you can do here is you can say when this collides with the player, you can insert a new one which says alterable value A is equal to retrieve data and then you can select the alterable value of your enemy like so. So now it says when these two alterable values are the same then we're just going to remove this uh, entry here you want to set the alterable value or you can even use flags um, they're just as good so set alterable value B to 1 so now we're just going to change this so replace so so um, compare alterable value alterable value B is different from 0 and then we're going to return alterable value B to zero. And then what we want to do is we want to signify using this counter again that there has been a sighting. So we want to say um, alterable value. Now obviously this wouldn't work for, for a unified level, but because we've only got one enemy, it will work. So we want alterable value B is different from zero and then value set counter to one and then we want another one so we'll just drag this down and it's equal to zero we're going to set the counter to zero so that we know that um, after the five seconds is up that it's gone back to zero so now if we play the level you'll see the bullet hits and it has spotted. Now it's only this enemy that has actually spotted the player and the five seconds are up, it's gone back to zero. And then as it's spied it again, this active object, this enemy has now spotted it. So what you can do then is you can create events for when it's alterable value B is equal to one and you can set it so that it kind of follows the player. So it's always looking in the direction of the player. And that way you can have um, multiple enemies on a level that, that automatically sense the player and follow them around. So there's, there's plenty of scope for this. And you can also, instead of just using the, the enemy object, say if you've got 50 different enemies, but you want to class them all under the same thing, you can use the, uh, the handy uh, groups. Now, where are we? We've got groups somewhere around here, I'm sure. Uh, qualifiers, that's what it's called in here. So what you do is you click Edit, and you add a qualifier and you would probably set it to bad you can create um, I don't think you can yes you can you can edit these um, entries which are just numbers down here uh, but really just use bad um, add that to there so now every you just add this to every enemy that, that you you make you know every different enemy type object and it's now a qualifier of bad and then what you can do is instead of having um, these events that revolve around enemy, you can revolve them around the bad entrance uh, entry. So the the bad qualifier, anything that's classed as a baddie, um, would then have this AI built into it. So it's a good way to 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 create um, a quick and easy AI system without with with little or or no real effort. And that way, then all your enemies will be able to see, and you'll only have to create one set of events. So with, with a few events, as you can see, we've only got eight here, and some of these are just for um, signifying um, that, that things are happening. We've actually created a way that the enemies can then sense the player. When they, when they see them, they get an internal value for that enemy to know that they're there. And then all you can do then is you, you, can, you can manipulate how the enemy acts when it's in that mode, when, when the value is equal to one or two it will do something different, but when it's equal to zero, it will just move around in a bouncy fashion, moving around the level, trying to find the enemy. So that's um, that's it for this tutorial. This, this will show you how to, to make a AI, and uh, hopefully you can use this in some of your games.